We just defined the all important concepts of measure and probability measure. And let me note here that the axioms, these conditions, in the case of a probability measure, these are sometimes referred to as Kolmogorov's axioms, named after Andrei Kolmogorov, one of the giants of 20th century mathematics. So before Kolmogorov, probability was hardly considered a branch of mathematics at all. It was, well, mainly, or partly because it was, uh, seemed to be mainly considered with gambling and how can you arrange some gambling system so that the odds are always in your favor. So people looked at that and said, well, that's not really serious mathematics. But then came Kolmogorov, and he saw that using measure theory, you could take probability theory and put it on a firm mathematical footing and prove some really interesting results. So Kolmogorov is highly revered in probability theory, considered the, the father of modern probability theory. So let's look at some examples. Look at some examples of measures. And in particular, we're going to start looking at examples of probability measures. So the first example, we'll take a finite set, omega. So we'll take omega to be just the numbers from 1 to n, say. Just some finite set. And we'll take our sigma algebra to be the power set of omega, and we will define on, so I'm going to use a little shorthand notation here, p of k equal to 1 over n for any k in omega. So here what I mean is this is p of the set, the single element set k. That's what I mean by P of K. I don't mean the element itself. This doesn't really make sense on its own because K isn't an element of the sigma algebra. K is just a, one of the elements of the set itself. So to be rigorous, I should say P of the set containing K. I'm going to find, define this to be 1 over N for all K. So this is called the uniform distribution on this set. Now I haven't defined P on all the sets of A, which we would have to do in order to have a measure, but in fact defining it on these single element sets is sufficient to induce a measure on the whole space. So I claim that there is a unique probability measure on A, on all the sets of A, that is consistent with this definition. And it's not too hard to see. You know, say I take some set. So let's look at just an example. Say I take 1, uh, 2, and 4. Say n is bigger than 4. Well, that set can be written as the disjoint union of 1, 2, and 4. And by countable additivity of a probability measure, remember, we have this condition, which also holds in the case of finite unions, because we could take, say, the set with 4 to be all of the, the ones 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc., up to infinity. And then this is the sum. I'll use my shorthand here, so for any set we decompose it uniquely in this way and we get its measure. So this defines a measure on A. That's a first example. Here's another example. Use different color.
Now let's consider a countably infinite set. So we'll take just the simplest countably infinite set, the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Again, we'll take our sigma algebra to be the power set. And now we will define, in the same way, we'll define it on the one element sets. P of k is going to be the probability that it takes k coin flips to get heads. So suppose we're flipping a coin. Let me write that. Probability it takes k coin flips to get heads. So suppose we've got some coin, say a quarter or a nickel or whatever, and suppose it's a fair coin, so it's 50-50 whether it comes up heads or tails. And we start flipping. We flip it once, so maybe we get tails. We flip it again, maybe we get another tails. Flip it again, and maybe the third time we get heads. So that means in that case, k would be 3, and the probability uh, P of K is the probability of that event occurring, the probability that it took us three coin flips before we got heads. And this is also equal to alpha times 1 minus alpha to the K minus 1, where alpha is the probability of getting heads on a single flip. So in the case of a fair coin, it's going to be 1 half times 1 minus 1 half to the k minus 1. Not going to prove this, but maybe you can sort of see why this is the case. You can convince yourself of, that this is the probability. And this is called the geometric distribution. And similarly to here, if we take any set in the sigma algebra A, we can decompose it in a unique way into single element sets and sum up the probabilities of all those to get the probability of the whole set. So this, in the same way as before, uniquely defines a probability on A. Uniquely defines a probability measure on A. Let's look at a third example. Now we're going to take an uncountable set. Uncountable. So this is infinite, but it's even more infinite. And we're going to look at the real numbers, R. Oh, actually, we're not going to look at the real numbers. Take that back. We're going to look at the non-negative real numbers from 0 to infinity, including 0. And the sigma algebra we will take as the Borel sigma algebra on that set, which you remember is the sigma algebra generated by the open sets of this, of omega. And, or equivalently, it's generated by the intervals, the open intervals, say, well, like A, B, that are contained in this. So that's going to be our sigma algebra. And we will define a probability measure by its values on the following sets. We're going to consider sets of the form intervals from 0 to x, and we'll define this to be 1 minus e to the minus x for any x positive. Now it might not be immediately clear, in fact it takes a little work to to check that 
In fact, these sets, sets of this form, also generate this Borel sigma algebra. And in fact, defining a probability measure by its values on these sets alone uniquely induces a probability measure on the whole sigma algebra. This distribution is called the exponential distribution. So similarly to before, remember, you know, up here we had we could decompose this set and we get some number uh, where each of the probabilities is defined by something in the, the set that we one of these single element sets. We can also define we can also decompose any set in this sigma algebra in terms of we can it could be written in terms of the sets of this form. It's not going to look like this. It's going to be it might be some super complicated expression, but it can be done, and so this uniquely defines a probability measure on this set. Now, one quick thing to note here. So before the probability of a single element set, for example here, was positive. But for this probability measure, the probability of a single element set, any single element set, is zero for any x. The probability of the single element set is zero. And this is because this is called, this is a continuous measure, or it's a continuous distribution.